the six, the sixteenth chapter, verse nineteen. I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever is fixed by you on earth will be fixed in heaven. Whatever you make free on earth will be made free in heaven. May God add a blessing to the reading of the text this morning. Praise God. We praise God this morning. Oh, did we get the lesson in worship? Praise God. We worship through a teaching this morning, a call and a response. Even when God calls us, there is a response. When we call on God, there is a response. Praise God. It is the tradition that has come with us, praise God, all down through the, through the ages, praise God. It is prayer time, if I am correct. I got a little technical difficulty, but that's going to be all right. There we go. Come on and fix it. Praise God. It is prayer time. And as we prepare our hearts this morning, if you have a special prayer request, you can drop it in the in the chat box. Um, in addition, I just want to lift up uh, our minister of music this morning. Praise God. Brother Kenny and his family, as he has uh, recently lost his nephew. Uh, we want to keep him in prayer and the whole family. We want to remember Brother Paul, who lost his mother um, this morning. And uh, him and uh, Patty are I'm sure in route, if not already there, to be there to comfort. Um, I want to also uh, lift up my mother who lost her uh, companion, Mr. Hurley, 92 years old. Uh, my mom said in the midst of her tears, it was he was really the best man I ever had, uh, which says a lot, praise God. And so he was such a gentle soul. So we wish them all as they make their journey uh, to the higher heavens, that they, uh, uh, as they go, that uh, God gives comfort to each person who's been touched by the lives of these people. Is there anybody else? I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, uh, leave anybody out in this. Uh, it seems to be a a season for us around uh, death and people transitioning. Um, uh, during this time. Oh, yes, we want to remember Miss Carolyn uh, for her loss as well. She had two deaths in her family. Uh, Sister Charlotte, Pastor, Car Pastor Carwell, and I did talk about that uh, as well. She reminded me, praise God. If anybody else has a prayer request this morning, uh, this is our time. This is the prayers of the people that we go before the throne of grace, the sacred space of us to have our conversation, raise our petitions before uh, our almighty God. God, we thank you this morning. We thank you, oh God, for allowing us to have this time to gather as family, as friends, as community, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we understand that even in the midst of death, that there is still victory. God, we know that the victory is in the struggle. We give you thanks and praise this morning because our faith, God, is that we pray the prayer, not the end result, because you and you alone, God, will know it. But we bring our faith to the moment of the prayer and we pray the prayer, believing you, oh God, no matter what the outcome, no matter what the outcome may be, our faith is that we pray our prayers. God, we come just lifting you up and thanking you for being a God who has kept us all down through the years, for being the God of our silent tears, being the God of our weary years, that you've never left humanity. Oh God, and we give you thanks and praise. We thank you, oh God, for how you have carried each and every one who is here, who can listen. We know that Every one of us have a testimony about who you are as and God alone, the one who sits high and yet looks low. We know that we serve an anthropomorphic God, a God that will come and walk with us and hold us in the time of need. We know you, God, in the difficult times of life, 
you have been there for us. We don't negate God. Even when we have felt that your presence, what, what we needed, oh God, but, but yet and still you have held us, oh God. Even when times that we've been angry for what we've had to go through, you never left us, God. You never, ever forsook us, oh God. You have always been there for us. Even when we doubt it, even when we our faith was diminished, oh God, you've never left us, oh God. In the darkness, when we just did not know, oh God, when the pain hit us, that was so great, God, even as we could have said, like Jesus said, my God, my God, wow, why have you forsaken me? But yet and still, God, we got through it. You're able. Just as Jesus knew as he hung there, he's an example for us. But in the darkness sometimes, God, we question you. Question we go through, but yet and still, those times when we can look back on our lives, you brought us through. We made it over, oh God, by your grace and your mercy, you brought us over because we're here. We're here with the testimony to know that the God we serve is an almighty great God. We give you thanks and praise this morning, God. We know you, God, with all of our being, with all of our shortcoming, with all, God, of who we are, and you know who we are. We give you thanks and praise this morning as we break, bring our broken selves and our whole selves in the areas where we need you to come and stir us, oh God. We give you thanks and praise this morning for our help, God. We look unto the hills. From whence does our help come? Our help cometh from you, God. So we give you thanks and praise this morning for all of the names that I called and those that I didn't call God who are having to deal with the loss of a loved one. Wrap them in your bosom, God. Come on, God. For we know that you're able for the mother of oh God who lost her son, for the son who lost his mother, for those who've lost their cousins, their nephews, God, hold us as a family, God, knowing that you're able to get us through it. Keep us in your bosom, God. Rock us right there and hold us. Mm, God, that even death cannot hold the God that we serve. Oh, God, we thank you for the rising of the sun. We thank you for the new mercies. We thank you for the grace that abounds. God, we give you thanks and praise. We ask you to bless us, God, as we continue in this worship service. Continue to bless, oh God, that you allow your word to come forth, that it would fall on good ground. Take root in our hearts. Move us to the places you, you would have us to go. God, that we do the work that you've laid at our hands to do, no matter what that work is, whether it's the gift of intercessory prayer, whether it is to feed, whether it is to clothe, whatever it is that you have called us to do, individually and collectively, God. Help us to do our callings. Help us to hear new callings, oh God, as you continue to, to have us to do the work, of God, here. For the least of these, help us to be more like Jesus. Help us, oh God, to be more like him. We offer this prayer, oh God, in the name of the one, Yeshua HaMashiach, who came and showed us the way, who has already prepared our pastor to bring forth the word, God, that we will receive it so that we can be all that you would have us to be. Bless her, bless her family, God, even now. Restore back even all that she's given out to serve your people. We offer this prayer from our hearts, oh God, receive our petition. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. Praise God this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Mm -mm -mm. Indeed, our present help in the time of need. 
Glory to God. What a mighty God we serve. What a loving God we serve. God, in all of the mysteries of who you are, and even for all of the times we don't understand who you are, how you are, God, we come to say we love you. El Olam, everlasting God. Olarun, the owner of heaven. Lord God Almighty, El Shaddai, the Most High God, El El Elyon. We thank you for all of the revealing of spiritual wisdom that came through your Son, our Lord and Savior. As he walked this realm, we thank you, God. I ask indeed that your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, would manifest in each and every one of us and that we would grab hold of this word for the journey ahead. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Can we go on to the next slide? So this is where my announcement is that I am now sitting with warriors. And if this goes over your head, then you need to count yourself as one of the sheep. Because if you remember, God has called me to wake the lions, not the sheep. So when you sit with warriors, the conversation is different. I just came for the keys. Yeshua is talking to Peter. And there's so much that goes on in this text at the beginning of chapter 16. The Pharisees, they have come and said, give me a sign. And he's like, wait a minute. So you can look at the sky and you see some clouds and you say, well, you know, it's going to rain. And then you look and it's this color. Well, it's going to do that. You can look at the sky and forecast the weather. And then Jesus rebukes them and says, you know, a wicked and evil generation asks for a sign. And the only sign you will get is that of Jonah. And we know we do not want to be a sore spot in the belly of the fish. We do not want to be that. But Yeshua is talking to these Pharisees because they're coming to test him. They're coming to test him. Now, as the children of God, there's no test need. You've passed, okay? What God is wanting you to do is wake up fully to who you are in Christ Jesus. Go to the next slide, Kenny. This is about the power of who you are in Christ Jesus. God says to Peter, who do they say that I am? And this is where this text comes from. Well, you're the son of God. Peter, I'm going to build a rock upon you. I'm going to build a church. But I want you to get the essence of church correct today. Because in our psyche, we've been socialized that church is something that we image in our minds. But it's from the old English word, sirisi, or seers, which can be traced back to the Germanic language. It is believed to have originated from the Greek word, kuriakon, meaning belonging to the Lord. The Greek word was derived from kurios, which means Lord or master, belonging to the Lord. Who is it that belongs to the Lord? We do. We will go consecrate buildings and do things and dedicate them to the Lord and sometimes not even consider whether we've been dedicated or not. So this word is about belonging to the Lord. And God cares. Yeshua did not come to die for the temple. He came to tear it down and as he said, rebuild it in three days. So when you just come for the keys, part of this also, you have to know, we say it every Sunday in the Apostles' Creed. What did Jesus do? He descended. So see, there are so many components to this. Next slide, Kenny concerning the holy keys, those keys that are there. And sometimes if you ever walked up and a whole argument stops because you were a key that came and mastered the situation and pushed everything back that God's presence may manifest and bring peace. Clace, 
a key. It is used only figuratively where the Lord said, Peter, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now in ancient times, the steward of a wealthy family, especially the royal household was given a key, probably a golden one in recognition of your office. So I am not gonna exclude you from this. This is in recognition of the offices we hold in the kingdom of God as the children of the most high God. Therefore, the phrase referring to giving a person the key naturally grew into an expression of raising him to great power. So now do you do know in the text as we go on, Peter exercises the use of that key on the day of Pentecost. He exercised the opening and said, no, this is what the prophet Joel spoke of. So sometimes your key is when God's calling you to say something sometimes that's convenient or may not be convenient because you are a key. Each and every last one of you are a key in the plan that God has in this realm as we continue to go through these end times. I believe part of that key, most believers understand what zeitgeist is, discerning the time. So it's not a key that was just given to Peter. You have your own as well. Go, Kenny. Next slide. So part of the government, if you go back to Hebrew, part of the government being on Yeshua's shoulders, guys, it's a key. You have keys where the enemy would try to prevent anyone from ascending but they would open the gate so you could get into hell. So when Jesus descended, he got the keys of hell and death. That's why he could boldly say, even before he did it, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And if you understand that, you will know why he can walk into a cemetery and they come and say, hey, you're here early. But then at the same time, the people in the community said, no, he can't come to our city. Because then you might get to know the people that did all the cruel things to a man that caused so many demons to rise up in him. See, they had a key, but it was the wrong one. You have a key to open doors and open people's spiritual eyes and minds to the wonder and the splendor of who our God is. And sometimes that key is just used in a kind word. Sometimes that key is just used when sometimes you don't say anything till God says speak. Now, I want you to understand this binding and loosing that Yeshua was talking about because Yeshua is a Jewish man. So these Lightfoot, and you will see Rosenmuller, these are Jewish men. They give a large number of citations from rabbinical authorities to show the common usage in the Jewish schools of the word bind and loose. And also the meaning of these figurative terms. According to Lightfoot, foot bind means to forbid. I, when your mom said, I forbid you to eat candy, she was binding you. I forbid you from talking back. That's a binding. So sometimes it's not something that we take and we make super spiritual. Oh, I bind you in the name of Jesus and I loose you. It's not that. It's your way of being. It's your way of being. Okay, we're talking to warriors today. It's your way of being. And sometimes when you smoothly walk through and you're being a blessing to someone and you're standing in that gap, guess what you're doing? You're loosing everything away from them that doesn't need to be there. And you don't even realize it. Bind means to forbid, while loose means to allow. Don't think about it. Sometimes we allow people to be cruel. We will give people a pass. You are loosening that bad attitude. You are loosening someone who doesn't know what it is to be in order. You are loosening disorder sometimes by allowing certain things to go on around you. So when you don't allow, the best example I can give you this week, and I don't want to get political, but Fonnie Willis, 
she was not going to allow them to step on her name. Her father wasn't going to allow it either. Her father wasn't going to allow it either. Do, do you get where we go? If you look at things that happened this week in the media, in the news, everything all of these systems and governments, they understand this. It's time for those who are part of the Lions of Judah, it's time for you to understand it and you to see things for what it is when it's actually something trying to hinder you rather than allowing you to be who you are in your Lord and Savior, allowing you to show forth the powers of God that works through you because the key is already there and sometimes just awakening you to the fact that you are the key. So Rose Muller says, binding and loosing, loosing, that is prohibiting and permitting. So let's change that. What do you prohibit and what do you permit? What do you prohibit and what do you permit? That is your exercise in binding and loosening. Do you prevent a kind word sometimes? Do you prevent people from getting help? Think about it. Do you know sometimes when you feel the flow of God and you break it, that you're trying to break even God in the midst of God's people, you can't do that. Well, you can, I wouldn't. So we want to permit, but see, there's a place for prohibition, not just alcohol. <laughs> there's a place for prohibition. There are times you need to prohibit things. You know that certain things, when you eat them, your blood pressure goes up. Why do you keep loosening that in your life? You know there are times you shouldn't go certain places. Why are you loosening disobedience? So I want you to get that different perspective as the lions, because if you think about lions, they walk through the forest and everything goes quiet. So sometimes you think, let me just have a little talk with Jesus and walk and tell him about my troubles. Think about it. You are the most powerful being on this earth. Yeshua gave us the keys and then made sure what could prevail against it. He had the keys to that. <laughs> That's why the gates of hell cannot prevail against God's people. Those things belonging to God. You belong to God. How many of you do not belong to God? How many of you do belong to God? This day, God sent me to tell you the gates of hell can't prevail against you. You're the key in this realm. And as long as this realm can keep you, keep you quiet, docile, worried about this, trying to get that, go over there. Just binding God's people over things that mean nothing. You are the key in this realm. And it's beautiful. It's, it's not just me, the pastor. Sometimes we've come in and taken our holy keys and we just throw them on the altar of the pastor. It's not my right to take your key. It's not my right. I didn't die for any of you. It's not my right to take one thing from you that Yeshua gave you. That Yeshua stood before the father and said, I pray that you would send them another comforter. So tell me who can take the spirit from you. Think about it. So Isaiah talks about that key. See that key, that, that gateway that Yeshua opened, part of that key is the government being on his shoulders. So we do our part in this realm concerning government, but that's not really our government. Now is it? That's not really our government, the Russian government, the um, synagogue. That's not really. God's governance is so much more 
because it transcends space and time. And you transcend space and time when you understand the power of who you are as one of God's keys in this realm. And if you don't believe me, as you go about this week, think about when you walk in the presence of someone. Make a decision. Are you binding or are you loosening? You disallowing or you allowing? Totally different. Sometimes we marvel at people. Everybody respects them and stuff. No, they just don't. They understand the concept of binding and loosening. They understand it. It is time for the lions, those who are the people who have never given up on God, never given up on the finished works of God, never cheapened the finished works of God. It's time for you to rise up and say, I got my key. Hey, it's right here. Because it is yours. And Ken, this is the last slide, correct? That key is yours. So if anything today, if you didn't recognize it, you just came for the key. But as one of the songwriters say, I got it. I, I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Mona's laughing. You got it. You are the key. So when you become the mystery in the room and people trying to understand you, it, no, they can't. You're sometimes the mystery of God, God's self walking in the room at times when something might not seem to make sense. Similar to when an elderly lady years ago was transitioning and I was part of the Assemblies of God. Similar, Paul and Patty. The pastor looked and said, well, y'all sitting here chit-chatting and a sacred thing is happening. A sacred thing was happening. And we all started to sing and she was word, trying to do the words and stuff. And after a while she could, but she was singing. And I think she just went on out. Just went on up saying, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Just praising God. And I used to think Pastor Monica was very strict. But as I've gotten older, I said, well, she made some good sense. And she knew spiritual truths that not everyone practiced. It was a time to celebrate. And I'll share this with you before I close. Concerning my nephew who passed away. When you understand that you are a key immediately I, I mean I just couldn't believe it I kept saying no 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 immediately Trey said to me because remember we're serving the God of the living not the dead the God of the living not the dead Trey said auntie I'm scared and my heart just broke he said I'm scared but as I was looking Kenny's grandfather comes walking toward him. And Trey said, I'm weighing in the balance. Kenny's grandfather came. Caldwell's came from everywhere. But then on top of that, the people from his mama's family came. The people from my family came. They came in droves. And while I can say this, sometimes it doesn't all make sense to me, but that baby wasn't weighing in the balance no more. So sometimes you walk around, I don't have nobody to speak up for me. You better open your spiritual eye and see the host that is for you and not against you. The next thing he said to me was, if I could tell you what I'm seeing, the beauty, earth looks nothing compared to what I am seeing. And then he said, auntie, speak well of me. And all of them say, light a candle for me. <laughs> the beauty, the beauty, young life, life that's been lived out. The beauty of our God's hand was working this week in ways to ascend those souls into the beautiful splendor of the God that we serve. Now, if you notice what I'm sitting in the spirit realm I had never seen so many Caldwell-looking folks in my life. 
And they're just coming and all our people are just coming to stand up for him. So young people, let me tell you something. Whether you live long or you go early, there's somebody to stand up for you. If this realm doesn't stand up for you, there's somebody to stand up for Trayvon when he gets on the other side. And there's somebody to stand up for George Floyd when they get on the other side. Just like there will be somebody to stand up for you when you get there. God will not deny any of the keys. Because see, what we don't understand is God made a copy of the master. And guess what lives in us? The master. Hey, come on. That's what's living in us. The master, not a copy. But the master key, God did not mind sharing. And God's son didn't go tell God, don't give him a key now. Because we need to decide if they can come or not. That didn't happen. There's a cloud of witnesses right now that is just rejoicing because they want you to know this thing that God is doing in wakening up the strong people. Then you can sit and have a conversation with warriors like this. Walk in, change the atmosphere. Walk in, shut it down if it's not of God. You have the key after all. You're the key to a lot of these things happening or not happening. But now you know you are a key. You know. God, I thank you for your mysteries, God. I thank you that you love your people enough that you will break down those mysteries and show us things we've never seen before, God. And we hear things we've never heard before, God. El Olam, God, everlasting, everlasting God, everlasting God. I thank you that all of our loved ones who made that transition and ascended to the, the heights of the heaven, I thank you, God, that even there, your mercy and your loving kindness was there to greet them in many, many ways, in the splendor and the beauty of who you are, in the power of their ancestors, and through the sanctioning of the one who is called Yeshua HaMashiach. That the creator knows you acknowledged the son of the living God. That will send you sailing through the higher heavens quicker than anything. And I thank you for that, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.